Hello everyone, long time no see, and in this video, hopefully I can remain consistent and actually follow through with this idea, but I'm hoping to vlog my NCT Dream concert experience. So while I have been going to K-pop concerts this past year, I haven't been really vlogging any of them just because I've been going with friends or therefore groups that I don't really care too much about documenting my experience with them. So this is a little different considering NCT Dream is one of my alts and I have been looking forward to this concert ever since they've honestly announced it. So I am trying to be as consistent with this as possible. So I would like to show you my packing, um, like what's in my bag, what I'm bringing to the concert, how I'm preparing for it, as well as the concert check-in experience and I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to show you because I feel like I've never been able to actually complete um, doing like a concert vlog. I don't remember when the last time I actually vlogged was. I'm pretty sure I didn't like the video, but that's besides the point. Anyways, uh, not too much right now just because it's the day before the concert and I'm honestly a really last minute packer. So I guess I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be bringing with me to the concert. I will be staying overnight because I'm not going to a local stop and while I'd like to take you through what I'm packing I can probably just show you what I'm going to be unpacking when I'm at the Airbnb just because I don't know what I'm packing yet and by the time I finally decide what I'm going to pack I imagine I'm going to forget to show you. Either way, quick glimpse, the nails are done as you can tell they were done by me. What I don't think you can tell is that I took around two hours on these and that's because I had to erase them multiple times. I'm keeping my nails as far away from the camera as possible so you don't see the details but the main thing that matters is that they match my light stick. And another thing that I think is going to be fun about this video is that I'm going to be including my costs for everything. Uh, I think this is just more for transparency like I'm always so curious because I'm a hmm, I forgot that word I'm kind of a nosy person so I'm always curious as to how much other K-pop sp fans spend on their concert experience and since I'm usually local to the stop I don't spend a lot of money out of pocket for transportation but this time I will be taking a longer trip to get there and I will be staying overnight so I'll be happy to share all that information with you and I think it'll just be interesting kind of so from the get-go i guess i'll start with all of the money that i've spent on preparing for the concert itself so the tickets i don't have yes it is the day before the concert and no i do not have tickets yet but i am hoping for last minute resales and if that doesn't pan out it's not a sold out concert so i'll be able to find something on Ticketmaster. either way i'm not too worried i'm just hoping for like a good deal from someone who's not able to go so for a concert ticket price, I don't have that for you yet, but for this light stick, I can definitely tell you the price of. I did just buy this light stick for the photo cards that came out. That was basically the last batch of these light sticks before they moved on to the new ones, which were the same for all the units. I don't like the new light stick, but that's besides the point. I had the light stick shipped directly to me and that was $62. 62 US dollars and I also bought these light stick decals on Ktwit, Ktwitter and I have four decals. The fourth one is elsewhere because I didn't want to actually cover this main spot. These four decals plus this plastic kind of like plate I guess, these set me back $19 so I'll I probably won't keep a running total on the side, but I'll keep you updated on what the costs are periodically throughout the video. So $62 for the light stick, $19 for the the four decals and the four plastic shields, and this deco sticker was free from a friend. This inside, uh, I have a little crochet, like macaron rabbit on the inside that my friend crocheted me. That is free. Because uh, it was a gift and these rhinestones up here, I'm not counting as a cost for the slide sticks. So I also consider them free. I'll only be counting costs for things that I specifically purchased for this trip. So that includes 
hotel, transportation, food, uh, concert ticket, merch, and freebies. I'm not buying any clothes for my outfits and I'm not buying any new makeup or anything or any other supplies like that. So my cost should be pretty low for the rest of this aside from ticket, transportation, hotel, all that stuff. I did make freebies which are an additional cost of this entire experience. I think I made over 200 so these freebie packs include two double-sided photo cards featuring my biases and i guess i do kind of quadruple bias even though i don't collect all of them so i have chunla jeno hechan and jamin as the four sides of these photo cards so that's two double-sided photo cards plus my business card that you can see back here as well as these two stickers in front so I did pay out of pocket for the business cards for the idols, but my actual business card for my own trading and selling account that I considered a compensated cost because I already had those on hand. The sleeve I also had on hand, the washi I had on hand, as well as the stickers. So I think total cost for these 400 400? Yeah, I think I have 400 of these ID cards. Two ID cards in each pack equals 200 freebie packs. I think for all 400 of these ID cards, I paid around $24, which is kind of a steal when you think about it. So either way, I have 200 of these that I am ready to hand out. And for the concert, I haven't decided if I'm going to bring this yet, but I do have this giant Hechan banner that is beautiful, and it's been hanging up on my wall, so I feel like I should bring it to the concert so it gets some use, but I don't want to lose it, and it's likely that I'm going to lose track of it somehow, so this is what I have so far. I think the next time I'll pick up this camera would be when I'm on my way there. And hopefully I don't forget to show you any part of my trip just because I think it's a fun way for me to look back to. But then again, I also have to make sure that I have enough memory in my phone because I just came back on vacation. So we'll see. So I totally forgot about my whole vlogging thing. Uh, even though I filmed the last bit of my video just last night, but obviously I kind of got caught up in all of the packing and the pre-concert conundrum of just you know being nervous for a concert and knowing that you spent a lot of money on an experience that you're hopefully having a good time at but either way i am on the train now fun fact i actually just bought my ticket to the concert because i like to do things last minute as i've mentioned before i wanted to get last minute cheap tickets off of StubHub. But I've been checking Ticketmaster and I feel like they've been dropping prices somehow so I'm not sure exactly what the deal was but when I checked the ticket prices this morning tickets for the section that I'm in were around $184 after fees and I thought that was a little too expensive but it looks like because I haven't sold out worst case scenario if prices don't drop further I didn't mind spending that money I just wanted to test my luck and so I've been checking Ticketmaster and I've also been checking StubHub as well to see if anyone was going to drop prices. And someone had their ticket listed at 123 after fees and I thought that wasn't terrible for the same section so I was eyeing that. But fun fact, I actually checked Ticketmaster again uh, just out of curiosity because I do this somewhat shady thing where I buy a concert ticket but I keep checking the official Ticketmaster ticketing site so then once I get to the concert venue and if I see that there are a couple of rows of unsold seats I might move myself anyways an ethical life pro tip right there if there's an unsold seat you can technically move there as long as you don't have someone coming into your seat to kick you out but anyways I have been checking the Ticketmaster app and I actually found that I think they've dropped prices somehow so I bought my ticket in section 106 for $83 which is almost $100 less than what they were listed for earlier today and this wasn't a resale ticket or anything. I think Ticketmaster has just been dropping prices because there are fully unsold rows for whatever reason. I don't remember if those rows were previously sold before or if they were just blacked out because 
the venue didn't want to open up that section. Either way, I have a great seat. I can't wait to show you when I'm actually at the venue. And hopefully you can hear this because I am right by the entrance of the train car. So there is a lot of white noise in the background. But I am on my way. How pee of it am I to buy my concert ticket while literally on the way to my concert? It's not the worst or last minute thing I've ever done. But you know, there'll be more. Anyways, I gotta save my battery. Hopefully you can hear me and I will continue this maybe when I'm at the train station or when I'm getting food. We'll see. We are now in Union Station down in DC where I am going to go look for food. I do have some time between now and my hotel check-in or Airbnb check-in. So I think I might honestly stop by the venue. It happens to be on the way from here to the Airbnb. So I might see if I can just have some time to hand out some of my freebies just because it started to rain and I don't necessarily want to lug them around. I'm not sure if I mentioned the bag policy for the venue, but the bags can't be bigger than five by seven. So I'm gonna try to get rid of as much stuff as I can because I don't want to hand anything out while I'm in the venue. I am in the beautiful capital of my country. I just ate my food really, really fast. I am almost 100% sure it's going to give me indigestion later, but at least I can pass off my indigestion as being nerves. It's raining a little bit, so I don't think I'm going to go to the venue just because it's technically going to add some time to my commute. So I'm just going to head straight to my Airbnb, do all of my makeup and charging and dressing up there, and then I will head down to the venue with all of my stuff. I hope that the bag limitation isn't all that strict. I feel like it is strict just based off of all the other uh, Reddit posts I've been reading, but I'm gonna head to my Airbnb now. It's around a decent, it's a decent walk. It's over like a mile. I think it's maybe two miles, but it'll be fine. It's some exercise and I can burn off some of the extra adrenaline. As long as it doesn't rain harder than this, then I should be okay. And then it's just a matter of putting everything into my cargo pants and pockets so I don't need to worry about bringing big bags that I won't be allowed to bring in. I don't want you to hear me get really out of breath while I am walking, so I will see you soon. So the rain is definitely coming down harder. Uh, I can't tell if I'm in a sketchy area or not. I would honestly say it's pretty decent just given the fact that it looks like a lot of the housing here looks expensive, but this is DC, so I feel like everything is expensive. So now I'm wondering if it's maybe worth me getting an Uber back from the venue and then to the train station again next morning, just because I'm gonna be traveling when it's dark out. But we'll see. Honestly, once again, with my financial transparency, I wanted to keep this entire adventure less than $500 and given how much money I saved on the ticket, I think it's really possible that I can make that happen because it looks like uh, I'm already in the ballpark of like 300 for transportation and the Airbnb. And then I allotted myself like another 180 for the actual concert ticket. But since it looks like I'm saving a bit on that, it does give me a little bit of a buffer room. Obviously, the budget isn't there to say, oh, okay, I can freely spend up to 500 But more like a, I, would, I wouldn't I would be upset if I did happen to spend 500 <sighs> And I arrived at that number because that was the price of the IP soundtrack, which I thought was too expensive for me to swing. Oh, I'm so tired. Maybe I should get an Uber or a Lyft to the venue. But the walk should only be around like 20 minutes at that point and I've been walking for almost 30. Who knows? And let's be honest, I'll be taking significantly less stuff than what I'm carrying right now, which is a duffel bag, my laptop, and another personal bag for the concert. So it's a lot, but I gotta go check my map again so I can figure out where we are. See you soon. Hello, hello. I am in my tiny Airbnb. I am 
panting like a dog in heat because I was fighting with the lock for my life. But I am in here. And my bag just fell to the ground, but that's fine. I have uh, 30 minutes to do my makeup and get ready before I want to go to the venue. So, or sorry, 45. Good, I have time. But <sighs> this is rough, y'all. I don't know if I want to travel again for a concert like this. And if I do, it, it will either be a hotel. But I gotta charge very quickly. Get ready, and then I will see y'all soon. I wish I was kidding, but it is raining pretty hard right now, and this kind of kills all of my plans to go hand out freebies to people hanging out in the venue. And I also have to walk there, so this is probably going to add an additional 10 minutes to my walk, which makes it a 30 minute walk in the dampness. And it's like high 60s outside, so it's decently hot, I would say, for rainy weather. So by the time I get there, I'm going to be soggy and sweaty, which is not fun. But I have changed my setup. I am now putting all of my freebies in the pockets. So I'm just going to hand these out to people in the venue or in my section. And I hope that people like them because I am paying it forward. And I'm probably not going to get many freebies back at this point just because... No one's going to be hanging out in any common areas. So I have 200 to get rid of and I hope I'm able to get rid of all of them because I don't want to bring any back with me. Because they don't really serve much of a purpose for me outside of this concert. Wish me luck, y'all. Uh, context, in case this is like the first video of mine that you click into or in case you sporadically watch my videos. But I am a, or I guess I should say was now, I was a really big tail stan. And obviously, that is over and done with. And as I explained to a couple of my friends, how I feel about him now is kind of like Teo, who I loved, to the idol who I adored, and who was honestly like my emotional support for so long. That idol is dead. And as of right now, all I'm seeing is people dragging the lifeless body of someone who happens to share the same name and looks like him and has the same career path and everything so i honestly like it's so hard to find love in a hobby that has so many personal ties to what someone is like i think that there's not really as much of a degree of separation as there is with like sports or anything like that because you can just very much enjoy sports and enjoy the athletes for their own performance but with k-pop idols there's just so much of it that is involved with their personality so much affability so much training so much pr and media training that it's unavoidable it's like it's almost impossible to avoid liking an idol for their personality in addition to their talents because that's essentially what they've been trained on Knowing what I know about Teo and seeing the way things have kind of devolved, it's really hard for me to look at any other K-pop group the same. And I know that's just me leaning into the whole parasocial thing, but like, it's, it's hard to avoid the parasocial aspect of K-pop. So because that's the case for me, I can't look at a lot of the K-pop groups, I stand the same anymore. And yeah, I should separate fiction and people. I should be able to separate media from their curators. And I think I'm getting there. I can listen to 127 songs perfectly fine right now. It's just, it does hit kind of painfully whenever I hear like a bridge and I hear a beautiful voice and I'm like, oh, who is that? I haven't listened to a 127 song in a while. I forgot their voices. And it's he who shall not be named. It's hard for me to remove myself from that sort of gut reaction. And when the news dropped, I was, you know, unfollowing a bunch of 127 accounts on Twitter because, I don't know, it became like this weird circle jerk of a lot of stands being like, oh, I always knew this was going to happen. I always knew he was a bad person. Like so many gotchas that started to be posted and then more people even now a couple weeks after it happened there are so many like instagram like big instagram or tiktok accounts that are like 
I don't know what they're doing, but they're essentially making memes or stories out of the whole tale incident. And they're, I don't know, it just, it feels wrong. It feels icky for me to look at those posts and think to myself, oh, okay, some woman got her life ruined and had her business basically posted for the entire world to see. And there are people who are making memes about it and who thought to themselves, oh, okay, I am going to say this thing and post this thing and farm it for content in hopes that people follow me out of it. So that's really been rubbing me the wrong way. So I'm not defending Teo at all, but like every time I see someone post something about like them cutting up their Teo photo cards or them saying something like, oh, it's always the quiet ones or them saying something like, I don't know what someone did recently. I don't know, like it's, it's just been happening so much where people are using Teo as some sort of gotcha to prove their point or to just boost their own followers. So every time I see one of those posts where it's like, oh, share the story if you don't support Teo or here's where this man belongs and it's just someone cutting up their photo cards, I just think to myself, or not even cutting up their photo cards because those people are like actual stands and I understand their reaction to this differently, but people who are just like scrapbooking him out of their albums and stuff. I understand that that's how they cope. I don't have to like it, and I'm not happy seeing it. So every time someone posts something like that, I've just been blocking them because I'm like, I'm already, I'm already feeling bad enough about this whole thing. I don't need to have other people kind of trivialize my pain. And yes, it does sound like I'm making this about me, but this is my own experience as a tail stand, as someone who has loved him for a really long time and who has like written super hard for him and his happiness and it just feels like all of that has I don't know it feels like the love is the love has been wasted and so unfortunately all that news dropped and I was super busy because I had one of my friends' wedding and everything and then after that I went on vacation for a really long time so I've been able to avoid the situation I've been able, I've kind of been able to avoid like processing it for the most part but now that I'm back home and I'm back to my regular routine and I'm about to go to an NCT Dream concert and anyone who's like ever ever known me closely in any K-pop sphere should know that I introduce myself as like a Tao and a Dream stan so <laughs> I'm like I'm like addressing both of those things in one go and it's hard for me right now to reconcile the fact that all that has happened and I'm going to a dream concert and I feel like I'm back to my main point I feel like if I don't have fun at this concert it's gonna kill my love for K-pop forever and that's a really 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 high standard for anyone to perform up to and it's hard and it's unfair for me to put that onus on dream but unfortunately that's just how the tiles fall that's just the way the timing works so i'm i'm not happy that that's the way it, it is but i feel like if if i don't have like a good time at dream today it's like over for me i don't think i can ever engage in k-pop content the same way like i've never been a girl group stand so it's not like i can run to my other groups like as soon as the tail news dropped and I've been unfollowing all the NCT accounts that were kind of had weird taste takes over it, my Instagram algorithm started recommending me a lot of like Pentagon, a lot of SF9, a lot of like dream content, and I did not appreciate that at all because I'm like the crux of this is that a man that I love and whose persona I thought I knew betrayed me, betrayed his fans, and distracting me with one man's issues by showing me another man is not the move. Like, yes, not all men, but it just tends to be mostly men who are perpetrators in this thing. That's basically it. Like, the last time something really bad happened to me, I happened to go to an NCT Dream concert right afterwards. So I think the timing with that was great because I didn't know Dream before that and they provided a really good distraction for me 
and I managed to like deep dive in a dream after that and I basically just fell in love with them. Now that I'm seeing dream a second time and there's this background info of knowing what's been going on behind the scenes, it's just not the same, it's just not the same comfortable feeling. So I feel like if this concert is a bust, I I might probably step away from K-pop. Honestly, I've just been getting busy in my personal life too, so it's like almost about time. But I don't know. It's hard. It's so hard not to take these things personally. And yeah, maybe it's on me for getting too deep into these groups, but I think another reason why I'm kind of like riding so hard for this concert is because I have spent a lot of money on this concert already and most of the time I realize that like the more money I spend on something the more of a return I am expecting from it so if I don't have fun at this concert I'm gonna be like oh what a waste of money that was I don't know for example five hundred dollars that I could have spent on vacation or some other experience or like a lot of food or a lot of dates you know stuff like that so I feel like if this one is a bust. It's over. And that's so dramatic of me, but like, as I was talking with one of my friends about this, I have been into K-pop and collecting for, like seriously, for like over three years now, maybe like three and a half years. And that's usually the timeline and like the lifespan of my hobbies. So, I was surprised that I've honestly been into K-pop for this long, and with the essential like dissolution of Pentagon and with me absolutely not wanting to engage with 127 at all, I think it really might be like the beginning of the end for me, but that's just me being dramatic, and I will be posting this video in its entirety, so I'm kind of hoping that I can eat my words, but who knows, like Pentagon isn't doing anything. I. I don't like 127 anymore. Dream, it's kind of all up to them for this point in time. So a little stressed out about that, but there's really nothing that they can do or nothing that I can do. I'm just going in with no expectations. Like I genuinely, I have not thought about this concert in seriousness, aside from the logistics of like how to get here, where I'm staying and how much the tickets are. I'm sure you've noticed, or maybe you haven't noticed, but in this entire video, I haven't once said that I'm excited, which I think is bad, but it's okay. Like, going in with no expectations usually means I have more fun. Like, the first time I saw Dream, I wasn't really expecting anything out of it at all, and then I ended up having a good time of my life. Like, I still say that it's one of the best concerts I've ever been to, which is so true. And that's because I didn't know any of their set lists and I just went in with an open mind. So I'm hoping the same can happen this time around too. And if not, I may just have to reassess my place in the K-pop world. Not to be dramatic, but I am inherently dramatic. But that's okay. I may honestly put this at the end of the video. I haven't decided yet. I'm not going to edit this part out because I think it's important to address, but we'll see. Uh, I'm basically just about done with my makeup. It only took 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, which was honestly really great and better than what I expected. I already had my food, so now it's literally just time for me to go to the venue and pass out some these. Ooh, actually. Let me show y'all what I packed. Might as well do like a flat lay of everything. So, here is the bags that I'm bringing to the venue. The venue says that I can only have a 7x5 bag. So that is this one right here. It fits everything like perfectly. Uh, this is a bag that my mom got, and surprisingly, it's really small, but it actually fits a lot, and I'll show you everything there, too. But for things that I have on the outside of my bag, hand sanitizer, which you always need, my fake gumdo Lee that I've been bringing around everywhere, 
And there are some hair ties attached to this carabiner just because you never know when you're going to get sweaty. In this pocket I have my wallet that has my ID and two cards inside. I should honestly get in the habit of carrying cash because the one restaurant I really wanted to go to was cash only today. So I wasn't able to go, which is why I stopped by the food court instead. And then in this tiny pocket back here, I have my baby's Gemla, my bias records essentially for the past couple of eras. These are their direct to consumer photo cards from ISTJ and from their poison music video. So sexy, sexy set. I'm still missing a Mark and G song, and at this point, I will pay a lot of money for them. So if you see them, then let me know. I can also fit a giant portable battery in here. This thing is super heavy, but it can charge my phone three times in one full charge of it. So it'll stay because it's convenient. And I always use a lot of battery at concerts because I do try to record like little snippets when I can. And here we have tissues in case the bathroom runs out of tissues or toilet paper. Uh, earplugs, which are always very important. Super, super, super important. A tiny mirror for me to fix my makeup, but I'm not I'm not going to bring any of my makeup stuff with me, so I don't know if I'll need it. And then my lip balm, which is huge, but I, I swear by this stuff. Like, if I don't bring this out with me, my entire day is thrown off and it's awful. And then in front I have my own personal headphones for when I'm walking around and my giant cable to connect my portable charger to my phone. And then for this bag, cries. It is a Martini Blue, which is a Hechan and Tail song. Rest in peace. We'll never see that. Ever. Anyways, this was a fan support from a fan site. We don't stand fan sites. I thought I could look past the ethics of it. Turns out I can't. I probably won't be supporting fan sites again. Who knows? I may eat my words. Ugh, anyways, now it's now it's starting to rain, so that's really annoying, but I hope it stops soon so I can hand out my freebies. Anyways, uh, I have all of my batteries there. I think I have six just in case my original set runs out. I have a small drawstring bag that I'm going to try to hide in one of my pockets in my cargo pants because I want to collect a lot of freebies today, and if I do, once I'm in the venue, I'm just going to take all the freebies out of my pockets and then into the drawstring bag. I'm so nervous, actually. No, but I'm here, and that's all that matters. Nothing's gonna happen between me now and me walking to the venue. So, wish me luck. Let's hope that I have fun. Okay, so I have a lot to say about that concert, but I will leave most of it for tomorrow on the train ride, but I did collect some merch. This was $100 after tax. Um, it's huge, but the weight is honestly really nice, so this is a zip-up, and the woman who was selling it to me was genuinely so sweet. I was asking her about the sizes, and she said that if I wanted to, I could try it on, and I was like, wow, uh, New Jersey and Philadelphia staff people could never, but yes, so this was my purchase, so I did spend the $80 on the ticket, and then because I technically saved or didn't spend a hundred dollars on the rest of the ticket for retail i treated myself to a sweater so girl math i'm back to net zero but apparently the venue wasn't who sold well so the venue itself decided to upgrade a lot of the people in the nosebleeds and gave them better tickets down on the f not on the floor but like in better sections so that was really sweet but before i forget let's just go through the freebie haul rest in peace martini blue bag you have served me well i got some candy i did also here is my light stick it fared pretty well but i do have to say i brought six batteries total right i didn't put any of them into my light stick because I didn't want the light stick to burst. Look at my nails. And so the guy who was checking me in at security said that I was only allowed to bring in three total 
batteries, but I didn't think to put three of them in my light stick as we were there. So I was like, okay, fine. I'm just, I'm, I'm just forced to throw them out. And he was apologetic about it, which was nice. Oh, I know why people are so nice. I'm in DC. I'm not in New York. I take it back. DC people are so nice. Fuck New York. Anyways, uh, my light stick died in the middle of the concert and I was so sad for other reasons. But I ended up just waving it around because I like having something to do with my hands. So freebie wise, I have this nice little band thing. I don't know if I want to take all these out. Is this a dungeon? Dungeon freebie. Uh, I'll take it out when I'm at home. I have a nice, beautiful Chumla pin. Look at him. Gorgeous, gorgeous man. Some confetti that I got. That's a nice little bracelet on the inside. Another ISTJ bracelet. This girl or this person wanted me to choose from the bag, but I was feeling pressured. So I was like, I'm just going to grab them by random. I got a nice extra light stick decal. More keychains, phone tabs thing. <gasps> this is so nice. This is so extra. And then this is a super, super pretty freebie. So I was lucky and I managed to hand out all of my freebies. I just went up to people who are in line and I'm like, you want freebies? So this is the haul that I had back for the merch line. I probably waited in line for about 30 minutes and it went really fast and it was pretty well stocked. So you know what? All in all, a good experience. Maybe I should just keep coming down to DC for these concerts. Because, like, I take it back. Philadelphia staff members are also incredibly kind. If it's just Studio Pav, I have beef with. And they usually rely on volunteers. But staff members at the venue who are usually incredible. 10 out of 10 concert experience. And I will tell you why in the next video tomorrow when I am on the train. Because it's midnight now and my train's at, like, 7.30. And I gotta make sure that I'm there because it's, like, a 40-minute walk. Wish me luck. So I have begun my beautiful scenic walk to the metro station this morning. I left about like an, uh, an hour earlier than my train actually lifts off, but that makes sense because it takes me around 40 minutes to get there and there's gonna be any buffer time for me wanting to stop and get breakfast. This is why I don't live in the city. I live in the suburbs, I love my suburbs. Granted, I hope there's not like an actual emergency going on right now. And I feel like it is an emergency given the seriousness of all the cars going around everywhere. So if that's the case, I'm gonna edit this out. But if not, I am free to post this. But I fell asleep at around like two and then I woke up at five because I just couldn't keep sleeping and that's a very solid, very, very solid three hours of sleep. I'm assuming part of it has to do with my weird jet lag that I still have going on because I've been waking up early and just staying up when usually I can fall back asleep. But heading home after the concert here in DC, I am all packed. I am already a little sweaty just because I'm carrying so much stuff. I don't know why. I have so much stuff with me and why it feels like my bags are a lot heavier when I used to be able to go to Europe for a weekend and survive with just like a backpack. But who knows? Anyways, I think I gotta walk faster. There is beauty all throughout the world. That is one of the Washington monuments. I think maybe the Washington monument or that, that's not the White House, whatever. Uh, there's so much construction going on here, but I guess now I can maybe start talking about the concert because I do have some buffer time. I went to the concert alone. I think you can probably guess that through all of my clips so far. And I was basically just walking around the venue, going in circles after I collected my merch to pass out the rest of my freebies. I basically gave my freebies to anyone who either locked eye contact and made some sort of like positive acknowledgement of me so maybe like a smile or like a little head nod but you know it's definitely hard to do when there's just so many people around so i don't blame anyone for like missing out on a freebie just because they didn't do any of that societal stuff but i was lining up to take a photo with one of the 
like advertising boards they have just to show that I was there at the NCT concert and this woman queued up behind me and asked me if I was alone so we could take photos for each other because we didn't have like a friend take any pictures for us and she like she and I just started chatting I gave her some of my freebies as like a kind of like a not like a thank you but like a hey we're having a human interaction let me give you something and foster humanity that way let me know why she asked me what section I'm in and I answer honestly I'm like oh yeah I'm in like section 105 or whatever it's like it's like on like the first level it's probably like the best k-pop concert ticket I've gotten in recent years so we start chatting that way and then she hits me with the bomb of so I have an extra floor ticket and my friend couldn't come do you want it do you want to sit with me and I'm like huh like are you are you sure that's really nice of you but like don't feel obligated to because you're talking to me or whatever and she's like no, no, no. like the ticket's been paid for it's gonna go to waste if I don't do anything with it and I would want the company so I was like oh shit that's crazy yeah let's do it and then we start joking around and I'm like oh you know I was getting ready to just sit in my seats so I wasn't really planning for anything if I had known we were gonna be floor I would have like brought a banner or maybe wore high heels and stuff like that and she goes oh we're I forgot exactly what she said but essentially it was like oh we're we're really close we're basically barricades so you don't need to worry about seeing over anyone in front of you I was like oh okay uh, sure let's see what happens then I get to my I get to my stop I get to my um like see I'm walking down a floor with her and I'm just kind of like this is fucking crazy because a floor for NCT Dream is not something that I have ever expected especially because I was complaining about like the cost of the tickets and the experience and everything so we walked down a floor and let me know how let me know how I was supposed to react when she just kept walking up and up and up like when I when she started like first row I assumed okay we we're gonna be like section four or five or six so the way the venue worked out was i can send a picture one and two were along the sides for the kind of like the main stage and the extended stage so if the members are on the extended stage they're just looking at their backs the whole time and then section five is like slightly to the right or left the opposite of what i just said before i thought we were going to be like in the back corner or something i was keeping my expectations low because at this point i was getting a free ticket and i wasn't i wasn't gonna ask for more you know let me know why we walk up to the front and center of the extended stage i will send a picture of what my seat looked like but i was i was front and center like i cannot say anything more i as you can tell right now it's been like only a few hours like it's 7 a.m right now and the concert probably ended at 10 30 however many hours it was in between. I am still speechless over the whole thing because I just thought how absolutely crazy it was and that I was worried about not having a good time at the concert, bemoaning costs, bemoaning things like having really high, like probably getting really high expectations if I get a floor seat and then being disappointed if the members don't interact with me. And yet I was given this opportunity to just have a floor seat, which is absolutely crazy to me. And because we were so front and center and this woman was genuinely so kind she knew that her friend couldn't make it ahead of time and wasn't able to sell it so she ended up making multiple posters and she was giving some to me for me to use because she was like i just want the members to see that i did something for them i don't care who gets the interaction if you hold up some of my posters for me i would appreciate that just so they can see the words that I've written out for them. And because she only has two hands, she's gonna be busy filming with one hand and then holding the post with the other. Okay, I, my Chinese is really bad. Chung La, my king, the literal best boy in the entire world. She, he was like, he, he was like her third buyer or something. So she did make signs for him. And she was giving me like some of his stuff. He came over multiple times the fan service that that man has is absolutely insane he will take the time to read everything that you wrote 
we'll wave back to everyone like front row like slightly middle row like anything he can possibly get access to he will try to react to he came over multiple times he like read her sign read my sign that she gave me so her sign again and then was just like the most playful person in the entire world and he has the vocals of like an absolute king like my impression of Chandla after like the dream show too was kind of like oh this guy's not taking his job seriously because he's wearing his sunglasses on stage which is such like an asian thing for me to say like i don't know how i can explain it but it just feels very asian where it's like oh i'm paying money to see you and your face and you're hiding it behind sunglasses, whack. But this guy, an absolute babe. I appreciate him so much. And then the second person who's best at reading signs would be Jamin. Like he came over and read the signs that we had for Chenla and for the other members multiple times. And because we didn't have anything for him, he didn't react to them, but like he read the signs, which makes me feel really bad. Uh, Jeno doesn't really read signs much. Hechan doesn't read signs that are in English. Like even if his name's in Korean, but the rest of it is English, he's just not gonna try. Understandable. Mark, weirdly enough, Mark and Jisung do not read signs, I feel like. They, they were good. I would say as someone who was sitting in the front row, I really appreciate the way they approached it. Cause they know front row people spent a lot of money, but they're not really disparaging anyone else who spent a lot of effort to go to the concert. So they would mostly look out into the crowd and not what like the first few rows are doing. So they also wouldn't read signs or interact with people, but they would constantly be like gazing out and like nodding at other fans who weren't directly in the front, which I can honestly genuinely appreciate. I don't really like it when the front row is prioritized compared to everyone else. But this time I'm like, you know what? I fuck with you. So that was crazy. I have videos of like, Chandla coming over and like reacting to our signs. A lot of them are bad because I wasn't expecting him to look at that point and I don't film every single song or every single minute so there were things that I missed but I will see if I can find the clips and clip them in. So I am about to recount the last bit of my NCT Dream concert experience. I just want to summarize everything so I can put it to rest and then upload this video for some content and because I need to save space on my phone. But back when I said that I wanted to be transparent about all my costs, I did actually put everything up into a spreadsheet uh, for, oops, for transparency. So the train round trip was 148, which isn't bad. Cheaper than a flight, but significantly more expensive than me just driving to my own local venue. But that was unrealistic because I was busy that day was something that was unnegotiable, non-negotiable. I was on a flight, nothing I can do about that. Moving on, Airbnb was 162, and this was one room only within like an entire share house. And I think, funnily enough, I think that entire house is just used as an Airbnb. The owners don't actually live there, so you know, it's kind of like an investment thing. And I think the other people who took up the other rooms were also there for the concert because I was on the phone in the kitchen with someone when two other people walked in wearing like very obvious NCT concert outfits and so we had like a little nod of acknowledgement but we were all tired at that point and I was on the phone so I didn't get to talking much but I do kind of wish that I had the foresight to keep some freebies just so I can give like mementos to people who I just happened to meet because I was given freebies when I left the venue too and I felt really bad at that point because I had nothing to give back and I know freebies are kind of like a pay it forward thing rather than a pay it back but I think that there's like a nice middle ground to be had like honestly I only started giving out freebies recently because I I've been very lucky to receive a lot of things at other concerts and I think I wanted to pay that sort of feeling forward to other people and I like I like seeing people happy and I remember having a conversation with a friend about this where I was like am I selfish if I want to give people freebies because I am happy seeing them happy and she was like no I think you're overthinking it I think the end 
uh, the end justifies the means. Like, as long as someone is happy and you did something to make it that way, you're good. Like, don't overthink it. You're doing a good thing. So, oh, oops, I forgot some stuff. Freebies. Okay, so the light stick was paid for previously, but it was purchased specifically for the concert, which is why it is in the spreadsheet. I think that was 63. I'm just going to round up for the sake of consistency. None of this is super detailed. But the light stick decals that I bought for the light sticks were 19. I got fast food for 550, and that was my technically only meal that entire one day trip, which isn't bad. Like a fast food meal can tide you over for a decently long time. And I did need the extra hit of sugar from the soda. For uh, the drink, so. Because it was raining so much and I got to the venue so early by accident and we weren't allowed in, I needed to find a place just so I can like sit down and kind of relax and get my bearings before the concert. So I just popped into this one restaurant, like a fast casual place, and I just bought the cheapest thing on the menu, which was a soda for $2.50. Significantly overpriced, but I just needed a place to sit down for 30 minutes and if that's the price, then that's not bad. You know, for using someone else's air conditioned and rainproof uh, space. I bought another drink the next day, aka this morning, because I I left my water bottle at home. I had water to bring with me and I had other drinks, but I was in a rush to leave, so I forgot all of those things, which was kind of an oversight on my end. But I needed, you know, hydration to stay alive, so I bought like a Powerade. Disgusting, it was sugar-free. I don't recommend sugar-free for anything because I just, the sugar-free taste is just way too obvious to me. So, don't recommend, I'm still drinking it now, I hate it. I give, With my personality, I'm not able to just throw it out without any remorse, so I think I will be forced to finish it. And by force, I mean I will make myself finish it. I bought the merch sweatshirt slash like zip up hoodie last night for $99 and then for the freebies that I made to hand out to everyone, I think those are around $24. I think that I talked in a previous clip that that just includes the business cards and it doesn't include any of the previous supplies that I already had including my like stickers, washi tape, penny sleeves, all that stuff. So when I said that I wanted to keep my entire trip under $500, let's see what the grand total is. There are easier ways to do this, but I just wanted to be able to show it on the screen. I do go over it by 25. I don't think there was anything that I could have done to make this cheap, to make this trip cheaper. Uh, I mean. Oh shit, okay, I forgot the... I forgot the actual ticket! Hold on. The ticket I bought was 84. I didn't end up using it because I got that upgraded floor seat gifted. So, okay, yeah, total trip came out to be 610. Obviously, I think the sweatshirt put me over. But I think in the actual situation where I had to buy the full retail price ticket of the actual event, which would have been around 180, I don't think I would have been able to make it under 500. I don't know why I arrived at 500 as the number. I think I just kind of made it arbitrary. Oh, I chose 500 because it is the closest to the actual price of the VIP soundcheck ticket. So I'm not disappointed with it if anything if i do regret anything i think it's maybe not being prepared for the drinks but that's small money and maybe being a little too 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 like spend happy with a sweatshirt i haven't decided if i'm gonna sell it yet uh i've been asking people around me in my life if i should sell it just because i think it's in it it's a, such a high expense but a lot of people think that i should keep it just for the sake of memory which i kind of agree with so that is that. Getting to the end of this video, I know I did go on a bit of a tangent with the whole tail thing. I think at this point, I put so much emphasis on 
tail potentially ruining my K-pop experience. And I put a lot of emphasis on Dream being the only thing to potentially change my perspective again and to bring me back to liking K-pop the way I did. Some There was some like divine intervention from God or whatever deity out there because I feel like if I wasn't already so stressed out over the show and put so much emphasis on me having a good time, I feel like that ticket would not have fallen into my lap, essentially. Uh, I can't say whether or not I'll be back to being fully invested in K-pop and being a group order manager and collector as I have been, based on like recent news. I think it's going to take a lot more than just one good show. Because I've also noticed with, like, other really good concerts that I've gone to, like, I still think that EXO in 2015 was one of the best K-pop concerts I've gone to, as well as BTS, I think in 2016. No, sorry, 2017. I think my years might be off, but that's fine. When I saw BTS, I was kind of a B- I was still kind of a BTS fan at that point. I wasn't following them on the day-to-day, but I listened to the music, I would check out the releases. But after I saw them... And I thought that that was easily the best K-pop concert I've ever been to in my life. I essentially just wiped my hands off of them forever. I left the venue and I was like, that was great. Nothing can ever top that. I'm going to drop K-pop. I'm going to leave on a high note, which is exactly what I did. I don't know if it was so much intentional as it was just situational because I was also uh, in a busy time of my life then. But after that... I, you know, I wasn't into K-pop for a lot of years until after the pandemic. So, I think it's still too early to say whether or not this will bring me back into K-pop. I think with Pentagon being so fractured as they are, I can now pick and choose what releases that I open group orders for. Because I used to just open group orders for all of them. And I think that kind of tired me out a little because I wasn't buying from my own group orders. That used to be the rule that I had for myself where I can only open a group order if I am buying from it myself, you know, as I just mentioned. But recently, with more people asking me and making requests on opening certain things, I just decided that I'm now just going to be more picky and only open something if I think that there's something for me out of it, too. I think it was an incredible experience. Obviously, I'm so thankful for the free front row ticket that my friend sent me. I hope that's, I hope that it's a friendship that we can continue on. There is a bit of a geographical distance between us, but I think, you know, we could always just be concert friends at the end of the day, but I, I had a really good time. I'm still in a little bit of disbelief. I, I thought that I would cry after the concert because they end the concert with Like We Just Met and that is one of my favorite songs and it means a lot to me sentimentally but I think at that point I was just too overwhelmed like the concert's been over for a couple of hours I'm back home I'm still like in shock like I don't believe that that happened to me people are DMing me with like congratulations like you deserve this oh that's so cool I'm glad that something like that happened to you in regards to me getting the free ticket but it's still it doesn't feel real like I'm watching my videos and I'm like there's no way I filmed this so I'm genuinely in like, I don't know, I, I don't know how to explain it. I think I'm so elated that I have to wait for the adrenaline to fully wear off. And I only got mm, three and a half hours of sleep, so I'm very clearly running on fumes. And this is said powery that is disgusting that I just found in my bag because I am unpacking right now. Um, crazy, crazy experience. I don't think any concert experience can top this one. And I don't know if that's going to be a negative or a positive thing because it might be like BTS back in 2017 where it was so good and nothing can top it that I'm just not going to try. Who knows? I think that's a really defeatist attitude to have. It is unfortunately the attitude I possess. So I think we'll just have to see. I really might just take things slow. Like I, I do know for a fact that I want to drop some of my collections and start to let go of albums that I don't particularly care for musically. I think once again, I'm going to go back to the whole, oh, collecting based on sentimentality and music instead of collecting based off of every release. So we'll see. Obviously, I think you'll hear things in this channel if anything changes, but it might be a while until I actually 
enact those changes, but it's crazy. Like, what a crazy good time. I feel like I'm on cloud nine. I, I don't even believe it when I tell my in real life friends what's going on because they knew that I was going down in DC for a concert. They just don't know the details of like this being one of my favorite groups and for all the tail stuff, you know. So there's a lot of content that's missing, but all in all, great experience. 10 out of 10. Would never be able to replicate ever again. But I hope... Uh, I hope this concert vlog was, like, entertaining. Kind of. Even if it's not, I hope... Well, you wouldn't have made it this far if you didn't think it was somewhat entertaining or out of curiosity. But what a great time. I'm so thankful to everyone who handed out freebies. Because a lot of these are genuinely really cute. You can tell a lot of love went into them. And I love... I love, like, little deco freebies like these. And this is crazy. I've never seen... Like, I've never been given keychains at a concert. Like, I hope they left their information or something. So at least I can promote them on social media. But if not, I had a great time. Um, I don't know. It's back to regularly scheduled programming. I'm still a little jet-lagged. And it's back to work. Back to normal life. So, let's see where that takes me. Thanks for actively listening in on all this. I hope you get to learn something. I hope that little plot twist of everything that happened in between was like interesting to you. I didn't do a lot of videos when I was inside the venue, so maybe I'll just clip in videos of like the members, but incredible. I love them so much. This will always be an amazing experience that I don't think I'll ever have words to fully describe. But... Yes, that is everything. I hope y'all get to catch NCT Dream at a state near you in the future. And that maybe we can meet each other. I'll see you next time.